Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Brave Namibia where we celebrate both ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. In our first clip today, Tuyemo Hadula chats to Deshimona Polis from Oshikati who makes beaded necklaces from recycled paper. My name is Deshimona Ndapandula Paulos. Uh, I am doing paper recycling uh, a necklace. Uh, as usually in Oshivambo, when we're wearing Oshivambo traditional, we have to wear onyoka. This kind of onyoka, and I made it in papers. These papers, they are already used, as you can see it here they are already used, they are recycled. Mm. Not only for Oshivambo traditional, we're also doing for African dress. As you see this one, they are made of uh, recycling for a pamph from pamphlet for Metro. I use it when it's the, the advertising, they are, they are special. After the special is done, are going to other shops and I collect the, the leftover specials, papers, so I can make them the jewelry, <coughs> the nice one. As you can see on mine, this one I made it also with the paper and you cannot believe it. It's just like a stick, as you see, to color in with pencil color for our kids. This pencil, they are not only for kids, we can make use them to make the jewelry also. Jewelry, I make them like this. I have to cut off this bolt with my cutter. I cut them like this. And I'm starting measure. I use the measurements for sizing the 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 birds. I can measure using the two size, two centimeters, which is good and look nice. And this recycling, I just only ran it through YouTube. But firstly, I saw it somewhere in the art office. I was one there for uh, for the piano because on that arts office there is also a piano classes I was wanted to do the piano but once I go there I found something on the wire and I asked him that Tato who was there is when he explained for me but I ah, it's just only a paper recycling it's a jewelry but he didn't give me enough information. When I leave, I just go to my office. I take my paper, my pen, underlinings. Oh, it was so bad when difficult. I take my phone, I go through to YouTube, searching art, paper, art, crafts. I saw it. Yes. Then I, for underlines like what I'm doing now, then I, would, I try it by my own. Once I try it, I fold the paper, which was so funny. Then later I try again. I take it to that tate from art to see how I made it. Then he was so happy. He was happy with me. Okay, then from that, I just continue. I never end up. I continue, continuing, continuing doing my art crafts, my paper necklaces, earrings, and many. I have trained some youth also, and now they are doing their own business. And some they want to come again to stay, to work with. I trained also some women from the region. 
and and they are doing their business again. And there are also some projects, community projects who wants me to go to train them again uh, by next week at the Onelawo, there nearby Ondangwa and Oshakati, between there. They asked me to go there to give them the train. So far I have been trained more than 20 years. Both of them, they are doing their own business. They used to sell them in our local, in our local town, yeah, and other towns nearby. But for me, yeah, I don't, now I'm a, I become what, uh, a super. I am no more selling here around where there's my, my train. Mine, I am exporting them to other religions like Elongo, Comas, you can find them there. Mm -hmm. Only lines. Like your Kakambe Takanuka, as we learn on from grade one to. <laughs> yeah. I love art. Ah, it's coloring like this. Then after that, you have to cut. Cut. But from the first time, I was just only used the scissor. Because mm. I'm doing also a printing shop. I was already having this cutter. Then I realized that why should I cannot only use the cutter? Then the cutter is doing the best than a scissor. Then after, after I cut, I have to take my piece of paper. And I fold it. I just only use the figure, my normal figure. I fold it, fold, fold, fold. And that one is a small because I just only use a single paper. And use it, use the double paper to make them bigger. So good, good, good. Then it's a bit again. I just want to encourage them to try their their minds to be fresh so that they can make anything they want. Cause everything around us it can make something and it can bring the bread on the table. As you can see that there are many graduates in our country we don't have job our government don't have job as youth we can make anything you can go out and take the leaves okay? you can make them the something to lay you can make the 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 empty bottles as like this rather than to take to take them to the dustbin so when we finish the cooking it's, it's just useless but you can make it another product. Yeah. I just only want for those who want to come and trade. They are more than welcome. I'm free. Anytime they can contact me. So we can make an agreement with them. What time I'm around. Because I'm a busy woman. I'm having many business. It's a, a trader. Yeah. I'm a nail technic. I'm doing printing also, anything I can do. Mm. The recycling materials, they are best. Cause you cannot cost many things. You just only take some few money to buy for something. You cannot use much on the recycling. You just only go around. You take your correct empty the, the waste. Uh, we call it a waste cause we don't use it again. Then you you make it something else again. Okay? Yeah. As you can see the the paper. Uh, these are the recyclings. Uh, cause they are already used. Then we finish to lead them.
we tie or we tie it then on dustbin. We cannot use it for other. Mm -hmm. uh, for the recycling, we keep our environment clean because we take the waste which we throw it away to recycling something. Even a plastic, it can make a bank, hand bank, and many things. Yeah. My contact number is 081-211-2577. For those who want to, to be trained, I can con you can contact me. I will be free to assist. Mm. And I, I can make it by free of charge. I cannot cost anything. Take a load off and tune into another episode of Brave Namibia as we take a look at both ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. Brave Namibia is broadcasted on NTV Saturdays at 6.30pm and oneup2.com as well as broadcasted on the following Facebook platforms on Wednesday at 5.30pm. Republicane, Algamina Titan, Namibian Sun and all Namibia Media Holdings pages. For more information, contact the Brave team at brave at synergy.com.na. Brave Namibia for the ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. Newsprint Namibia is a web offset printing operation that specializes in the printing of newspapers and commercial inserts. We are the leaders in our industry with the highest quality print work and the shortest turnaround time from computer to print and delivery anywhere in the country daily. Newsprint was established mainly as a newspaper print company, but had to diversify its business to do commercial printing as required in the market. We print commercial inserts, previously printed in South Africa, in the shortest possible time. We, as an organization, also started printing workbooks for our education system and will also print textbooks for the Namibian market. For more information, please contact print at newsprint.com. Next, we're in Vintuk, where Tanya Bowser catches up with double amputee Miki Yavonovich, who lets nothing stand in her way. Actually, not in, my name is Miki. Um, I'm actually not in Namibia, although I've been living here for five years. I was born in Pretoria in South Africa. I had a very rare, I don't want to say disease, but a um, deform uh, when I was born uh, called Fabula hemimelia where I was born without the fibulas in both my bottom legs, which caused my one leg to be a bit shorter than the other, and the other one to be completely, completely deformed. Um, my mother had to make the tough decision, either I would be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life, or my legs were amputated. So they decided at the age of one that my legs were going to be amputated. Um, and then I got my first pair of prosthetics when I was three. So I've been going to the same doctor for the past 22 years in Nail Sprite in Mpumalanga in South Africa. Um, he's literally known me my whole life, so having prosthetic legs is nothing unfamiliar to me. Um, it's all I know. So um, I had to, well, my mom had to raise me to be very strong because when you're small, the other kids don't really know, you know what's going on, why you're walking funny, why you can't do this or do that. Um, so I had to be really confident, I had to learn to be confident from a young age. Otherwise, I don't know, children tease, but they don't, like, as I grew up, I realized I don't mean it in a bad way, they're just curious, and a lot of parents don't, um, they don't give information about people like me, they don't teach them about people like me, they just like, don't, look, don't look at them, and then they just tend to, like, not look at them. Um, and that's when they start teasing because they don't know anything. So, uh, primary school was a bit of a hassle for me, especially with the children teasing. Uh, but as soon as I got to high school, everything changed. People were accepting, people were friendly about it. And that's when I started being more confident, wearing shorts, wearing short dresses. 
Um, so high school really changed for me. I know a lot of people don't have good high school experiences, but I definitely did. Um, and you know, I've got a really good sense of humor. So sometimes I tend to make bad jokes about disabilities, but people find them funny. Um, because if you feel comfortable, then the other people feel comfortable around you. That's usually how it works. Um, I wasn't interested in sport in a young age at all. There weren't a lot of role models for me because the one that I had ended up in jail, <laughs> meaning Oscar Pistorius, because he was born exactly the same way as me. But as I got a bit older um, and started using social media more, I realized that there were a lot of amputees and people with disabilities that are doing this and doing that and taking part in the Paralympics and this and that. So everything you can imagine they can do. And then that really opened my eyes because it's not something that I was exposed to as a young age. I just thought it was like me and a few older gentlemen that I met that had prosthetics. So it was really an eye-opener for me to see all these things on social media. And then I got the opportunity to move to Namibia when I was 20 to come study here. So I finished my honours degree in tourism and hospitality and events management. And while I was doing that, I um, have been working for the same family for five years now as a full-time au pair, looking after three little girls every day. They feel like my own kids by now. Um, so I've been here for five years, and now the last year I'm just studying a certificate in business administration. Um, and then at the end of the year, I'm moving back to Pretoria, South Africa, um, to start. And how did how did you get into au pair? Uh, it's a funny story. So I didn't realized that I'd be looking after kids like at all my life. It wasn't even a thought in my mind. But the people that I were working for in Pretoria, they told me that the family in Namibia needs someone to look after the kids. Would I be interested? And I just said yes. Like, I didn't even think about it. I just said yes. And then we had a <laughs> tough full-time job. But it works out because with the salary that I get, I can pay for my studies myself. Um, you know, it's difficult some parents who can't afford it, including mine. So it's it's nice to feel that I can support myself and pay for my studies by myself. So do e I go to evening classes because I'm a part-time student. So I work full day and then from half past five till half past nine, I'm at class. Okay. Yeah, um, like I said, I wasn't really interested in sports. And then when I moved here, I wanted to actually join a kickboxing class, but the ones that they had were not for amateurs, more for professionals. I wanted to do this as a profession and I wasn't interested in that. I just wanted to do it for the fitness um, because I need to stay fit. If I if I gain too much weight, I'm not able to walk. And if I lose too much weight, I'm also not able to walk. Then I have to get new legs and it's a very expensive process. So I needed to just maintain my weight. So I signed up at Virgin Active and that didn't last long because you have no motivation to go by yourself. And then I met a boxing trainer. And he said I should come to one of his classes. And that was two years ago. And then I've been boxing for two years uh, with Ims at AC Boxing. Um, he used to have his gym in Katatura. And then when COVID happened, he had to close. After that, I uh, went with him to his boot camp at the Katatura Hospital, um, Nepal Fields. And there they had the, the boot camp, we have to lift tires and you need to do sit-ups and push-ups and run around the field. So that was a big challenge for me as well. Um, but then I hurt my knee, I dislocated it in December and I couldn't return to boot camp because it's just too much pressure on my, on my limbs. And then in the beginning of January, a new boxing gym opened up in Vinsuk and I started there and I haven't stopped since. Uh, boxing is a really good motivation for me to stay fit and the people that I box with are a good motivators as well. And in between that, um, I do rock climbing as well at Marua Mall, um, which is also a challenge for me because my feet can't bend as well as normal feet. So it's always, a, 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 it's always an accomplishment if I get to the top. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do, but I have to try and try about four or five times because my arms just get extremely tired. But if I do make it up, it's, it's definitely an accomplishment. Do you have any advice or words of wisdom to not only people who are amputees, but just young people in general? 
Definitely. Um, the word confidence can mean so much in your life. If, if you're confident, other people will stop being, no, not normal, but will stop being confident around you as well. Um, if you just believe in yourself and love the way you are and you don't feel that you are forced to change yourself, um, you'll be happy for a very, very long time. And there's nothing you can't do. No, no. I mean, well, I can't ride a bicycle because it's really difficult. I need spe special. I need my bicycle to be um, modified. But other than that, there's literally nothing that I won't try. Sometimes I won't get it right, but I have to at least try. You can't just say, no, I can't do it without trying it. Because your life is just going to end up being miserable, to be honest. So just be confident and honestly, just love the way you are. Just love yourself. Take a load off and tune into another episode of Brave Namibia, when we take a look at both ordinary and extraordinary Namibians sharing their stories. Brave Namibia is broadcasted on NTV Saturdays at 6.30pm and 1up2.com and broadcasted on the following Facebook platforms on Wednesday at 5.30pm. Republic Hain, Algemeine Titan, Namibian Sun, and all Namibia Media Holdings pages. For more information, contact the Brave team at brave at synergy.com.na. Brave Namibia, for the ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. We know that violence against women and girls is pervasive everywhere in the world. So now imagine a conflict breaks out, or a natural disaster happens, or a global pandemic like the one we have seen since 2020 breaks out. Institutions are often focused on addressing this crisis. And in conflict settings, some of the institutions that are responsible for protecting women's rights collapse. The United Nations and UN Women work around the world to address some of these challenges. We make sure that women and girls who are victims of violence access services, including justice, health, psychosocial support, and reintegration. We also work to address the root causes that generate violence. For example, addressing harmful social norms and masculinity. We can prevent violence against women before it happens. It means tackling the root causes of violence, working with men and boys to end power over women, which is often normalized and justified. Transforming these root causes and preventing violence needs political commitment and leadership, laws and policies that promote gender equality, investments in women's organizations and resources for prevention work. But prevention also starts with you. You can start by educating yourself, speak out when you get a chance, advocate for survivors' rights, and always listen to survivors. Preventing violence against women and girls before it actually happens is the most effective way of ending it. So let's start now.